122. All right, listen up. We're going to sing the first and second verse. Then we'll sing the refrain. Then we'll sing the third, fourth verse, the refrain, and the fifth and sixth verse, and then the refrain. We good? Now you're looking at me kind of strange, all right? Instructions. Let's see how we do. Here we go. to gather in your house in this day after Christmas. Thank you for this season. Lord, we are uh, encouraged uh, to see several guests with us today and, and uh, some family from distant places that have traveled in and we're able to uh, reunite with them for just a few uh, moments today. Lord, we, we pray that uh, all of us, whether we're uh, members here, guests, or or first-time visitors, Lord, I pray that, that uh, your word would do its work in each of our hearts and lives. Help us, each one, to know that uh, we've gathered with your people to worship you today, and may each of us know that we've gotten something from the Lord uh, before we, we exit the, the building here in just in a few moments. Minister uh, to us in, in song and by your word. Bless our choir now as they sing for us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Stand through to page 192. All right. Here we go. The first one was a test. All right. Page 192. All right. First verse, second verse, then the chorus. Third verse, fourth verse, then the chorus. This is tricky, though. Then the fifth verse, we have to go right to the chorus because there's not a sixth verse. All right. Just want to make sure. All right. Here we go. 192. <laughs>
they start reversing the order of the verses, we're going to have trouble with that one. That's going to get a little bit too hairy, but that's good. Good stuff. Boy, I keep looking around the auditorium, and I go, oh, they're here. We're glad that all of you are here. Good to see, uh, good to see so many. So hope to get to uh, connect with you before you, before you leave today. Um, let me uh, remind everyone that, of course, our service schedule this week will be normal, uh, Wednesday night at uh, 7, and then next Sunday will be a regular schedule of services as well, so I hope that you'll be faithful to every uh, service uh, that you possibly can be, and then also remember that our, uh, our students, of course, remember, and families, we're on, still on school break this next week uh, with our, our uh, Christian school. Missions Conference is the next big event on the calendar. That's the last uh, Wednesday to Sunday there of January, January 26th to the 30th. And so please make sure you've got those dates carved out to be here with us uh, each of those uh, Monday or Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night. And then, of course, uh, Sunday, a full day, special day for us as uh, we have uh, our faith promise commitments on, on that day. Looking forward to Missions Conference. Mark that time off. And if, if you're new to Bethel, uh, Missions Conference is one of the highlights of the year, if not uh, probably, it's right near the top. It's going to be in the top two or three anyway, so you want to make sure you're here for our Missions Conference. All right, my dad will come and receive our offering this morning. All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord, and uh, this is a wonderful time of the year. Amen. We get our attention where it should be on the Lord, and at least those of us that are Christians, and uh, it's just a blessing. Uh, thankful for Sunday school is really a blessing this morning, and, and uh, Tom did a wonderful job. Good to have him and his wife, and, and you know, and the grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mom will take our offering. You know, uh, you can have a little, and it's a lot if you know the Lord. You can have a lot, and it be so little. hope you're part of the first group. And, uh, giving is such a, a, a blessed part of our worship to the Lord. Let's have our ushers come and honor the Lord with our tithes and offerings. What a great giver is our God. Beyond that we can <coughs> comprehend. Pastor Brent Todd, will you thank the Lord, please? Uh, Father, Lord, in heaven, we do thank you uh, for this day that you gave us, Lord, and our For that, we do pray that you bless this offering, Lord, bless the givers, uh, as they give, Lord, that you provide for their needs, Lord, and we do pray that you do uh, help us as a church to uh, use what's given wisely, Lord, and we do pray that you do uh, be with pastor today to deliver your word, help us apply the truth that we hear, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
isn't that why he came a poor lost world to save to carry all our shame and heal the hurt away bring home to the hopeless shield them from the it is. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 2 in our Bibles this morning. We'll finish our Sunday morning Christmas series themed around the angel that is mentioned in several passages and I don't think it's a stretch to assume where he's not named by name that uh, it's Gabriel. As we look here at Luke chapter 2, the account of, of the birth of Christ, titled today's message, Gabriel Visits Bethlehem. Stand with me if you're able and would, out of respect for the Word of God, as we read our text this morning, Luke chapter 2, and you follow along if you would, beginning with verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. It all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, 
goodwill toward men. It came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, well, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Gabriel visits Bethlehem. Father, thank you again for the privilege it's ours to gather in your house on your day, Sunday, the Lord's Day. Thank you for this Christmas season. Lord, I pray that you would meet with us. Lord, that uh, each of us would get something from you today. May we focus on your word. I pray that Lord, you'd uh, eliminate, minimize distraction. May we focus on thee. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. I failed to mention earlier, probably a, a very important announcement this morning to this end, because perhaps many of you got uh, new electronic devices during this Christmas season. Make sure those things are silent so there won't be a distraction here uh, during the preaching time, if you would. And if possible, try not to, to uh, leave your seat uh, for the next uh, 30, 40 minutes, all right, till we're done, that'd be appreciated. If you have to, if you have an emergency, obviously you won't be shamed. Well, some of you we might just because, but most of you we won't. Tom, stay in your seat. All right, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, there we go. Gabriel, of course, uh, we assume, and uh, one Bible commenter that I uh, used for in my, my sermon preparation study, uh, his, his notes in, in for, for verse 10, and the angel said unto them, he's got in the angel, and he's got in parentheses Gabriel, question mark, uh, because it seems Gabriel's very busy during this Christmas season. He uh, talked to Mary and shared with her what was going to, going to happen, that she was, uh, as a pure young woman, uh, be, be with child uh, as a virgin, uh, of the Holy Ghost, she'd be with child, and then uh, Joseph had an angel appear to him in a dream. We think also that was probably Gabriel. And then today we see this angel announcing the birth of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. So although it's not specifically spelled out for us, I don't think it's much of a stretch to uh, assume that it is Gabriel that's heralding this news, which is, which is what these messengers from heaven did. They heralded the news of Christ. And today we see this angel heralding the news of the gospel. And what a blessed privilege is ours today. Uh, you, you may consider yourself a fallen angel. Uh, maybe some of your family does, especially after spending time with you over the holidays. But we're still to be messengers of the gospel of Christ. If you're a child of God, we're to be proclaiming heaven's message, uh, the wonderful good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we look at our uh, text today, and, and I don't intend to be long this morning, although sometimes my intentions don't always happen that way, don't work out the way I intend, but, but we'll try to mind the Lord this morning. But as we, as we look at this text this morning, and I, I really want us to focus on, on the verses 6 through 18 in particular, I, I think about this, I think about the gift that uh, Gabriel announces today, and in, in our text, and I, I think about the fact that many of us have tried and worked hard to try to purchase a gift, the perfect gift for someone, and you're just racking your brain, it seems, all uh, season long, and how can I get the right thing, and what do I get, you know, uh, how can I get the right gift, uh, what in the world do they want, you ask them for help, and perhaps you, when you ask them, they're somewhat like I am, I don't know. Aren't you a blessing? You know, I'd like to get you a gift, something that you could use and would want. What What would you need? I don't know. Right? Uh, it's, you know, what do you do? It, it's nice when the list is given, and then some people hate that too. Well, I don't want you to tell me all the details. Give me a little bit of room here, so it's somewhat of a surprise. You know, uh, either way, try to try to try to buy a gift uh, for someone that's that's uh, hard to buy for or, or nearly impossible to, to, uh, to buy for and, and try as we might and, and, and wish and, and uh, work to try to get that perfect gift for that, that person, we all come up short, don't we? Our purchases don't work out the way we intended. Or sometimes we get the right gift, but it's the wrong color. <laughs> that could be bad. Or you get perhaps the right gift, but it's the wrong size. 
Now that happens a lot. I think tomorrow is one of the busiest days in retail ever for people exchanging things uh, for the right size or different color and some of those things. But as we look at our text this morning, I want us to consider for just a few moments how that the angel announced the perfect gift for all people. Yeah. The perfect gift for all people. And I do mean all. Amen. Every tribe, nation, and tongue. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. The perfect gift was announced for you. Amen. Amen. It was announced for me. And that's my first point. The angel here, he announced the perfect gift. We see that again, if you will. Let me call your attention back to verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He announced the perfect gift. If you would, keep your place here in Luke chapter 2 and go with me to Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. And you'll want to stay here in Isaiah. We're going to go over a couple chapters here in just a moment as well. But uh, keep your place here in Luke 2, and then let's, let's go to Isaiah 7. Jesus is, first of all, he's the perfect gift. He is the prophesied gift. Jesus is the prophesied gift. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12, and don't turn there, but stay there in Isaiah, the Bible says, For I will hasten my word to perform it. Boy, there is a statement. I will hasten my word to perform it. That word hasten in Jeremiah 1.12 means uh, sleepless. Be on the lookout. We can say it this way. God is looking for the opportunity to fulfill his word. Now think about that for a moment. We're going to revisit that in just a second. God is looking for the opportunity to fulfill his word. I will hasten my word to, to perform it. Isaiah 7 and verse 14. You're there with me. Follow along as I read verse 14. We see that, the, the, that Jesus is the prophesied gift. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Of course, that means God with us. In Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, we see further prophecy fulfilled about the location of, of the Christ child. In Micah 5 and verse 2, the Bible says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. God is, is, is looking to fulfill, to, uh, to, to uh, he's on the lookout to fulfill his word, to keep his word. That's why we can gratefully proclaim, quote, read from the book of Romans, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is hastening to fulfill his word that promise to you. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is not only looking to fulfill those prophecies that have been uh, recorded, and many of them have been fulfilled. There are more prophecies to be fulfilled. Man, right. But may I say it to you like this? <coughs> Romans chapter 10 is a prophecy of the Lord that he desires to fill for you, fulfill for you. Right. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God desires, God is looking, he is hastening to perform his word. He's yeah. looking to, to save another soul. Yeah. And he does. You know, people are trusting Christ every week. We're blessed and, and gratefully thankful to say in the, in the last uh, four to six weeks here in our church, we've seen probably, I think, a dozen Amen. that have asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save them. We praise the Lord for that. God is hastening his word to perform it. He's on the lookout to fulfill his word. And not only with your redemption, but God is on the lookout to fulfill his word in your life as you and I will trust him and take the steps of faith that God would desire for us. We need to be people of the book. We need to live according to the word of God. He announced the perfect good gift. Jesus is the prophesied gift. But I want you to think about this as well as we go over now to Isaiah chapter 9, that Jesus is the potent gift. Notice what it says in verse chapter 9 and verse 6. And we see here in, in verses 6 and 7 uh, the history of Christ. 
Verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You know, many babies have been born that would become a king. That's happened many, many times. But there's only one king that became a baby. His name is Jesus. Yeah. He's the prophesied gift. He's the potentate gift. He is the perfect gift. The, the angel announced the perfect gift. Now go with me back to Luke chapter 2 if you would. And I want us to focus for a few moments on verse 12. Luke chapter 2 and verse 12. The angel uh, proclaiming uh, the, the Savior is born in verse 12. This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. He announced the purpose of the gift. The angel's detailed description here revealed the gift's purpose. Revealed Jesus' purpose. He humbled himself. Apostle Paul penned in Philippians. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We see here the, the picture, the description of how they would find the Christ child, the Savior, uh, that, that depicted his purpose, and that was that he was born to die. We see his meager clothes, these swaddling clothes, most often used to wrap the, the body of a deceased person for burial. It pictured the fact that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was born to die. Born to die. You know, when we see a little baby... Uh, we don't. We, we see a precious little child, and, and, and there's there's a there's a new to us uh, baby here uh, today, and and they're just precious. They're 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 sweet. We we look at a little child like that. Our our thought is, man, new life, a whole life ahead of them. We don't we don't think about a, a baby uh, being born to die. Now, some of us have had to deal with it, perhaps in our in your personal home or or uh, in extended family, we've had to deal with with difficulties there with. Uh, stillborn children and some of those things and those, those are difficult and unusual hard to deal with but when a baby is born you don't think well this this baby is born so they can die but our Christ our, our, our the Christ child was right immediately upon his his birth we see his humility he's born in a in a stable He's, he's, he's wrapped in swaddling clothes his meager clothes and we think about his manger cradle. And this illustration will not be uh, new to our church family, immediate church family, but it always gets me, even though I preach it. I think I try to use this every year in the Christmas season, how that manger pictured the cross and his death. We don't know if it was a wooden manger or a stone manger. If it were a wooden manger, it was no doubt made, made like a cross, and an X like this, and the baby would have been cradled in that, that manger, pictured the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we picture our cross is, is like this, but many of the crosses in those days would have been like that, and they would hang a man on, on a cross. It pictured his death, that manger cradle. It might well also have been a stone cradle, which of course pictured his entombment. They put him in a cave and rolled a stone in front of that cave. We see that the angel announced the perfect gift. The angel announced the purpose of the gift. He was born to die. He was born to be the sacrifice for your sin and for mine. But we see thirdly this morning, he also announced the peace brought by the gift. <clears throat> Where our world needs peace, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. We need peace, don't we? Amen. Right. That's good. We live... I use this word. It's my four dollar word for you this morning. We we live disheveled lives. Yep. We're running to and fro, hither and yon, and uh, I, many times we're running running around. And, and how many of you went through an? Don't answer out loud. How many or raise your hand? Indicate. How many of you went through an intersection this week? Got through it. And wondered. Wait a minute. Did I stop at that stop sign? Is that light green? Uh, or perhaps you're at an intersection. Someone's blown on the horn. It's green. Go. 
right? Uh, we live a lot, we're distracted, we got a lot going on in our lives. We are a busy people. It seems like we're getting a whole lot less done. Yep, that's right. That's good. The angel not only announced the perfect gift and the purpose of the gift, but he announced the peace that is brought by the gift. Verses 10, 13, and 14. Verse 10, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. In verse 13, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. What was the good news that the angel brought? What was that good news? One commenter said it this way. What was the good news? It was not that God sent a soldier or a judge or a reformer, but that God had sent a Savior to meet man's personal need. End quote. God, the, the announcement of the angel wasn't that God had, had sent some soldier, some warrior to rescue them from their political foes and, and set up a, a kingdom immediately. It wasn't that God uh, sent, sent some reformer that was going to have some uh, mental breakthrough that would help everyone. It wasn't that God had sent some great uh, scientist who was going to cure all their ills. No, he sent a savior so that they could find peace. And that peace was with God himself. Peace brought by the gift. They were praising God. Yeah. God is worthy of our praise. That's right. He is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise and our adoration. They were glorifying God. Glory to God in the highest. Praising God. Saying glory to God in the highest. He is worthy of our worship. You talk about a generation of people with misplaced values. We are living in such a generation. Right, right. Amen. I mean, it is nigh unto, it really is nigh, and I don't use this word flippantly, it is nigh unto insanity what people value today and what people devalue. Right. Right. Yeah. Preach it. People place more value on a pet yep. than they will a person. Right. You say, preacher, that's not true. You need to start watching the news a little bit. That's right. Somebody's abusing a dog, it'll be headline news, and everybody be calling for that person's mm -hmm. scalp. But the aborted babies, that's a choice, mm -hmm. according to society. We're living in a time that very, our misplaced value, it's insane. Right. right. It really is. Mm -hmm. We need to value God again. And therefore, our values will be from God. Amen. We would have appropriate values. They were glorifying God. He's worthy of our worship, our, our bestowing of dignity and honor. God is worthy of our worship. Amen. Now, that's one of the reasons why we as a, we're not uh, dictators about this. We're not militant about it. That's one of the reasons why we encourage people to uh, dress well when we come to worship the Lord. He's worthy of our worship and adoration. Now, I know, hey, sometimes you got to come straight from work and you're, you're just doing all you can to get to church. Praise God for you. Amen. Most, most, of, most of us don't have that problem. We can be properly attired. You say, well, God looks on the heart. I know that. Duh. We know that. We understand that. But doesn't the way we appear give an impression of how we value what we're doing here today? It certainly does. Certainly does. The way we, the way our, our appearance. He's, he's worthy of our worship, our bestowing of dignity and honor. They were praising God. They were saying glory to God in the highest. They were proclaiming peace. Peace to all people. Verse 10 again, the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, the word behold should cause us to pause, to see, look, Consider. Behold. Look. Consider this. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The angel and the angels were proclaiming peace to all people. 
How can a sinner, a violator of God's just, right, holy, accurate law, and it, the, the law and demands of God are all of the above. They are just. There's no injustice with God. They are right. God is not wrong about anything. Amen. Amen. They're right. They're just. They're holy. Amen. God gave them. God knows what he's doing. Amen. How could a sinner, how could a violator of God's just laws, of his holiness, be at peace with God? Let me give a little bit of explanation here about what I mean by peace with God. This peace with God in, in, in uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, I'll refer to it again here in a moment, but let me mention this to you. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, right? This peace with God is not a, it's not a peace treaty. Right? It's not a negotiated Peace. It's not a, let me say it this way, it's not a truce. Right? Um, sometimes I'll be counseling uh, with a uh, uh, married couple or something like that, or uh, maybe a couple of youngsters uh, in our school, or, and uh, you're, as a counselor, you're trying to help them, first of all, first and foremost, get right with the Lord, and then secondly, get right with their, their uh, if it's a school situation, with their, their classmate or uh, maybe it's a staff member situation or, or in, in a marriage, right? And, and sometimes when we're counseling, we might try to, you know, let's just find the truce here. Let's settle down enough where we can all take a breath and, and uh, let's communicate about this, right? We try to negotiate a, a truce. When there are national conflicts, right, nation against nation, and there's a peace treaty, what is it? It's a negotiated peace at some level, right? So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a truce. Our peace with God is not a truce. What do I mean by that? It's not a treaty that where we come to negotiate terms with God and establish some kind of a demilitarized zone where we can function and, and God, God can function too. No, our peace with God is an absolute peace. Right. Right. It's a perfect peace. Amen. It's a never-ending peace. But there are a couple, a couple things here we need to note about this peace. Not only is it it's not a truce, but this peace requires our repentance. Right. To be at peace with God is going to require our repentance. In Isaiah 48, verse 22, the Bible says this, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Right. You say, well, preacher, wait a minute. You just said a moment ago that this peace was good news for all people. But then you just quoted, the Bible says, There's no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Is the Bible contradicting itself? Absolutely not. The Bible is showing us that we in our wickedness cannot be at peace with God unless we have a Savior. That's, right. That's why the angel's proclamation here is such good news. I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Yeah. We need one. Right. We are all, each and every one of us, each and every last one of us, sinners. Amen. We've violated God's just, right, and holy <laughs> law. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so that death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Of course, Romans 5.12 is referring to Adam's sin, Adam and Eve's sin, way back there are several thousand years prior to Romans chapter 5. We, we're born with a sin nature. All of us are, are born that way. We, we could say it, and we shouldn't say it disrespectfully. I hope you don't, but we, we are all chips off the old block. We're born with a sin nature because our parents are sinners. And because our grandparents are sinners, and so on and so forth. All the way back to Adam. We're born with a sin nature. We're born where we are at war with God. We're not at peace with God. We're born with a sin nature. Let me mention this because the Lord just put this in my mind to make sure I'm clear about this. Obviously, a child who doesn't understand yet, we believe, is safe. That's right. 
until they're old enough to understand their sinfulness, which is fine, they're accountable for their, their sin. Right. And in those early years, uh, I think the Bible clearly clearly teaches that. You can look at, at David and the death of, of uh, his toddler son uh, there uh, in the Samuels and Kings, and you can you can uh, see evidence evidence of that fact. But we're born with a sin nature. I mean, even a little baby, even though they're safe, they're sinners. Right? There's probably some terrorizing the nursery workers right now. <laughs> some of you are going, yeah, I think right here it might be mine. Right. They'll be fine. Our nursery workers are tough. We douse them. We, we, they wear Teflon before they go in. <laughs> the kids will be fine. But all of us are sinners because of our sin nature. And all of us are sinners because of our sinful choices. That's right. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You may say, well, I come by, I'm, I'm a sinner, I come by it honestly, and that would be true. We're all born with the sin nature. But you're a sinner because you've chosen to sin. <coughs> and this is not confession time. Your sin's between you and the Lord, but all of us have sinned this week. That's right. Truth be told, we probably all sinned today. Man. Preacher, I've only been awake for a little while. Some of you may have just woken up again. Hey, we've only been awake for a little while. Surely I haven't sinned yet. Well, I, I doubt it. Most of us have. Man. We're bent towards sin. We're bent towards selfishness. The peace that God offers requires that we would repent. Jesus, Jesus said in Luke chapter 13 and verse 3, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Right. What does it mean to repent? It means that we turn from our way of trying to earn the goodness of God, our way of trying to earn, we, we might say it this way, the good graces of God. Grace is unmerited favor, so how you would earn the graces of God, I don't understand, but it doesn't quite make sense, does it? But we have, I think we understand what we mean when we, we would say things like that. We, we can't earn redemption. We can't earn heaven. I've likened it this way, and if you think about it, it's true. You know you couldn't earn heaven if you had a thousand lifetimes of good works. You couldn't. Why? Because in those thousand lifetimes, you'd commit so many sins that would outweigh those good works. And God's standard is not a balancing standard in heaven. It's perfect holiness. How can we find perfect holiness? How can we, how can we be clean? How can we have peace with God? It's only through redemption. Amen. This peace with God is not a truce. This peace with God requires our repentance. Now listen, friend. This peace follows redemption. Romans 5.1, I, I quoted it to you earlier, let me quote it again. Romans 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by grace, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? What does that word being mean? That is a, a continuing present. Therefore, being justified. Being justified. It's, it's not, well, I got justified uh, last Sunday, and I've sinned this week, so I need to get re-justified. No, that doesn't, that's not how it works. No, because when we're born in the family of God, we are born into the family of God, and we are forever in his family. Amen. Eternal life is eternal. Everlasting life is everlasting. Right. Uh, God, God's gift is forever. The peace that follows that this peace is a peace that follows our redemption. We're, we're born in the family of God because God buys us back from sin through the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why John 3.16, perhaps the most famous verse in all of the Bible, is so important. It gives us the gospel in a verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's peace with God. That's peace with God. It follows redemption. Romans 6 and verse 23, for the wages of sin, the, uh, I can say it this way, the wages of sin is the first part of the verse there. The wages of sin, the the reward of our sinfulness for the wages of sin, the verse goes on to say this, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life for Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We deserve death. And if you die without the Redeemer, without the Savior, 
you're not only going to die physically, as all of us will, but you're also going to die eternally. Right. You say, preacher, I don't like to think about things like that, especially on the Sunday after Christmas. Listen, listen, friend, and I mean, I'm, I'm not being ugly, I'm not being mean, but if you don't understand that the gift of Christmas is about redeeming you from eternal death, you've missed the message of Christmas. Amen. The reason we celebrate Christmas is because the Lord Jesus Christ gave the perfect gift. Amen. He gives to you and he gives to me the perfect gift. It is redemption. Perhaps you, like me, had to scratch your head. Maybe that's why a few more hairs are missing. <laughs> Trying to come up with the perfect gift this year. You know, the angel some 2,000 plus years ago announced the best news ever to some shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night. He announced the perfect gift in this field outside of Bethlehem. The perfect gift had just arrived. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. Oh, if you receive that gift. If you receive the perfect gift, do you know Christ is your personal Lord and Savior? His purpose, when he came, he was given a gift. He was born as, as prophesied. He was, he was a king who became a baby. He took upon himself the, the form of human flesh that he could die in our place. The perfect gift was announced. The perfect gift, his purpose was to die for you and for me. Christ didn't die because of anything that he did. Christ died with purpose for all of the bad things that you and I do and have done. Have you received this perfect gift? In order for the gift of redemption to be realized, it has to be received. You know, this is an easy time of year for me to illustrate this Bible truth. In order for the gift of salvation to be realized, it has to be received. I have a gift in my office that was purchased for someone. They don't have it yet. That makes sense, right? It's still in my office. It was purchased for someone. It will not become theirs until they, till I offer it to them and they receive it. That makes sense to us, doesn't it? The gift won't become theirs until they receive it. Perhaps you, uh, I think, uh, actually, I think we do. We've got a gift under our tree uh, right now at home that is, was purchased for someone. It hasn't been given to them yet, nor have they received it. In order for the gift to transfer ownership, it has to be offered and it has to be received. Listen, the good news is this. The gift of redemption has been offered to you. Amen. Amen. But have you received it? Yeah. You say, preacher, I have. Man, well, you ought to be saying, praise God, I, I've got the greatest gift ever. Yeah. It, may have been, it may have been this morning. It may have been uh, 80 years ago. But I've received Christ. I'm thankful that I'm saved. You ought to, you ought to praise the Lord for that gift that you received. If you're here today and, and you're searching your mind and your soul and there's an emptiness within you, you've got questions, wait a minute, I don't know if I've received this gift. I want you to know, friend, listen, we're not here to pressure anybody into anything. We're here to help you. Amen. We would desire that you receive the gift. That you receive the gift of salvation. Amen. Redemption. You can have your sin forgiven. And you can be at peace with God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Being is a continuing present. Do you know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? If you're here today and you don't know Christ, you can come this morning on invitation time and we'll take a Bible, someone will take privately, won't embarrass you in any way, and share with you how you can know Christ as your Savior. Not because we've arrived, but because we've received a gift and we want to share it with everybody. You know, the wonderful thing about salvation is it's not diluted by the more they get it. You know, can you imagine if you purchased, uh, let me use this one, this is a popular gift this year that I, from what I understand, is hard to come by. Is it the PlayStation 27 or whatever? No. Is it 5? Some of you, somebody five, help yeah. me out. PlayStation 5, everybody's trying to find the PlayStation 5. Can you imagine you're a grandparent and you've got 12 grandkids <coughs> and you got PlayStation 5. 
and your 12 grandkids are divided under four homes. So you come out there at Christmas time, you say, hey, this is awesome. I got all of you a PlayStation 5. Wait a minute. There's 12 of us and there's four homes. No problem. We're going to cut it in four pieces. <laughs> that would kind of ruin the gift, wouldn't it? Right. You know what salvation is not that way? Right. God is hastening it's good. to perform his word. God has purchased your salvation. Amen. Amen. I can't have yours, and you can't have mine. God has purchased your salvation, but you have to receive it. Yeah. You have to receive it. Have you received it? You say, preacher, I'm not sure. Listen, we'll have an invitation a little bit, just a few moments here. We'll invite people to come. If God has worked in their heart, come. God's dealing in their heart about other matters. They'll spend some time in prayer with the Lord. You can come. And we'll have someone take the word of God and show you what God has to say about you knowing Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You can trust him today. It's simply coming clean with God. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I understand that I can't earn salvation my way. I'm thankful, Lord, that you gave the greatest gift of all. You gave the Lord Jesus Christ. He came and died in my place. Lord, I, best I know how, I ask you to forgive me of my sin, and I ask you to save my soul. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I'm, I'm trusting your word. Let me tell you something, friend. God will keep his word. There's a lot of people who don't keep their word today. God has always kept his word. Amen. And he will always keep his word. Right. He's hastening to perform his word. Won't you come and receive it today? Christian brothers and sisters, you've received that perfect gift. We need to be a lot like these shepherds, don't we? Notice what it says there again in verse 17. And when they had seen, when they'd seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. We need to be communicating the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. All they that heard it wondered at the message of what they had heard by the shepherds. You know what that encourages me about? Sometimes we think, you know, if, if I can't win somebody to Christ, then there's no sense even trying. You know, you need to get people thinking. Yeah. They wondered about the things the shepherds had said. Huh. That's interesting. And we ask the Lord to help us communicate points that will cause those we're communicating to to think. Yeah. Salvation is a matter of the heart, not a matter of a pressure scheme. Amen. We're not selling a pyramid scheme here. Right. We're proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's all about him. It's all about him. Aren't you thankful that it is? May we be busy about sharing the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. As one of our hymns says, go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for our time together in your word today. Lord, I pray if there are any among us that aren't sure of their redemption. They're not settled, Lord, about whether or not they've trusted you as their personal Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that you would help them to know that you love them and that they're among people who want to be helped to them today. Lord, if they're listening online, I pray, Lord, that they would ask you even now to forgive them of their sin and ask you to be their Savior. Lord, I pray that those you've worked in about this matter of knowing you and being at peace with you would receive you as their personal Lord and Savior today. And Lord, to those of us who are blessed and privileged to look back with good memories on that time, that place where we repented of our sin and asked you to forgive us and save us, Lord, help us to be busy like these shepherds to make known abroad what we've learned, what we've received, to share the good news of the Savior with others. Thank you for this Christmas message. Thank you for the gift of redemption. Help us to be busy about proclaiming it to others. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. All right, heads.